Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Darth Sloan here, your official partnered content creator for Expansive Worlds. And what we're doing today is we are going to see if there is actually a difference between monofilament line, the fluorocarbon line, and the braided line, and see what those differences are. I know one difference, and we'll get to that, but as far as like catching fish, uh, line strength, snap the line, visibility, those types of things. We're going to dive a little deeper into it. We're going to go fish for Camiso, Barbel, and start comparing, especially when we catch fish of sim similar size and see if there's any difference at all. You know, what our conclusions will be. We'll draw all those conclusions in the end. But before we go any further, please do me a favor. Get that like, subscribe, notify bell so that you don't miss out on any future content as I'm taking requests. Anybody that has something that, that they want to make a video on, please let me know. But this is a request here. I was asked on a comment from a YouTube video, Darth, would you please make a video on the differences between lines? So that gave me a good idea. And every now and then I'll check through all those comments looking for a good idea. And that one really hit off and, and made me think, you know, that would be a good video. And I'm curious myself if there is a difference because let's look, for example, we're going to use the 22 pound line. That's what I like to use on um, Camiso anyway. They can make it up to I think 30 some pounds, but I like to get a little more XP with my fish. So the line gives you a little XP as I'm trying to get to a little more XP if you like a lower line and you can get them in on a 22 you're just going to have a little bit of a fight but that's the size that i prefer okay braided is what i normally use all right let's look at it diameter 0 0.008 inches abrasion resistance is low whatever that means visibility is moderate okay now let's go to my, uh, fluorocarbon and look at the 22 pound line. Now the diameter I noticed right off the bat, 0 0.016. So the diameter of the string is thicker. Abrasion resistance, high. Visibility, low. Okay. So abrasion resistance is high. Hmm does that mean but the diameter it's a thicker line so you know when you get spooled when when, an, when a fish just takes you out and spools you and it stays red and there's nothing you can do about it and then it snaps there is less line on the reel because of the diameter when you use a fluorocarbon versus a braided okay braided would let you go out there to 300 and some feet in most cases, depending on the line that you're using, because it's half the diameter of the fluorocarbon. So that's why a lot of people prefer the braided, especially when going for a fish like Big Larry or any of those big legendaries, is it's more line for you to work with and be working with that drag to try to wear the fish out before it gets to that spooled area on the reel and snaps your line. If you can wear them out before they get to that point, then they won't snap your line because you can keep adjusting your drag. And that's why it's very important that you learn these fish. Some fish, like those big ones, you have to be very aggressive with at the start so that they don't take you out to maximum distance and spool you. Um, and that's also another little trick is if you can cast toward a bank and get them to run to the bank to where they're not going out to the open waters, that's another way you can keep them from spoiling you. But sometimes it just depends on where they bite and where they run and all that. But the braided line gives you some more room to work with. I like to find that sweet spot on the drag to where when you're looking at, when you're looking at the bottom right, there's that wheel that shows your line tightness and all that. And you know, it goes pink and cherry red, white. Um, I like to put it all the way around to nine o'clock when it's pink. And then I'll just raise my line up just a little bit to turn it 
cherry red just for a second. So whatever percentage of drag that is, it's different per fish. You know, some fish it's 60, 65%, some fish it's 30, 35%. But I'll, I'll keep adjusting my drag until I see it go up to that point. And then I'll just start bumping my, my rod up just a little bit to turn it cherry red for a second. Now, if you do that big long raise on your pole, and it stays cherry red for three or four seconds, that's normal when your line gets snapped. And when, when it goes back to white, that fish is getting ready to take another run on you. So when it goes all the way back to, right, to white, it's taking a rest, a little breather. That is a horrible time to do one of those big long pumps because right after it does that, it goes, phew, turns all the way back around and, and a lot of times it will go all the way to 12 o'clock if it's a big fish. And if you're in the middle of a big long pump, snap, it will snap your line. So when it always goes back to white, I'm not pumping at that point. I let it do its run. And then when it drops back down below nine o'clock, then I start doing the short pumps again. So that's just a little technique thing, no matter what line I'm using that I do. So let's look at, um, the 22 pound monofilament. Now it's the same diameter as the fluorocarbon, 0 0.016. So the braided is half the thickness of both of them. That's why people prefer the braided, I think. Now abrasion resistance, moderate. Visibility, high. Okay, visibility is high. So supposedly the fish sees the line more so than the other ones because visibility is high on that one. It's low on the fluorocarbon. It is moderate on the braided. Now the abrasion resistance, we got low on the braided. We got high on the fluorocarbon. We got moderate on the monofill. Now abrasion resistance, is that that big of a factor? We're gonna test all this out today, guys. We're gonna buy them all and get them out of storage too, the ones that we, and we're gonna set them up on a pole and we're just gonna go out and fish for some camiso. First, we're gonna use the monofilament. I never use monofilament. And I'm gonna just throw on like a two cheese just to get some fish biting for the camiso. We're gonna start comparing you know, we'll find similar fish. We can't compare a six pound fish to a 20 pound fish. So we're, you know, when we catch similar size fish, we're gonna make some comparisons. So it could take a minute to make this video by the time I catch all these fish on all three lines and catch similar size fish so that we can make a good comparison. But anyway, I'm gonna go out there and do it and we will return with some results. All right, we just got a bite here. It started taking a little bit of drag. We're at 40%. Did you see there how I took it to uh, about nine o'clock on that wheel and I started bumping it? We're on the monofilament. See how big a boy this is. It didn't take me long to get a bite. Supposedly the visibility is real high. I just don't see it affecting it at all. I, I had my line out there not long at all, got a bite. You know. All right, let's see how big of a you know, we've started with. A 15.6 pounds. I'm, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just record this, and that is the mono, just so that for the purposes of the video, when I catch one of similar, you know, I can compare. Right? Okay. Okay. Here is one. Another quick bite. Here's one 11.33. Nothing to note. No trouble at all. We're still on the mono. All right, let's record this one. See how big it is. We have a 15 pounder, almost 16 pounder, an 11 pounder. Still using the mono on these fish. And then we'll switch over to the fluorocarbon and do our comparison. Another 11 pounder, about like the last one I got. All right, so now I'm just gonna switch over. Let's 
to the fluorocarbon, 22 pound one. We we'll use the same exact everything else. Changing the line out. We'll see what happens here. I'm curious myself. This was a very good idea. Now, the line wasn't out there far at all. This feels like a, around the same weight of the fish that we were catching. It wasn't out there long at all. There's another one. Now, the visibility is low on the fluorocarbon, though. I did get a quicker bite. I did notice that, but it also could be that maybe I cast it in a better spot, too. All right, so there's a 12.87 pounder. I didn't notice any difference at all as far as like between it and the 11 pounder or even really the 15.67 pounder. There's no noticeable difference here in the line except for, and I did get a quicker bite there. Well, maybe I need to consider that. I mean, that might be something, there might be something to the visibility uh, or I just got lucky and cast it in a better spot. All right, here is our second fish on the fluorocarbon line. Again, nothing of note in the battle here. Not really noticed any big difference. That one took a little bit longer to bite. The first one was like right there. I may have cast it right beside the face or something. That's a smaller fish, 8.94. All right, this one's taking just a little bit of drag out. Could be around that 16 pound mark. Let's see how it behaves. There's that nine o'clock I was talking about. Try to bump it up into there. And now it's, see there, now it's taking its little run. That's when you don't want to get caught with a big large punt. And it drops back and see right there. I don't want to do a large punt and let it do its run, then do it. I don't think this fish is quite big enough to snap me off, but that's what I'm talking about. Like right there. Okay, let's see. We got a 16.57 pound, so that's not even a pound bigger than that other one. And I had no problems catching it. So there's enough data to compare the mono to the fluoro. So now let's look at braided. See how well it does. All right, guys, here is the braided line and our first contestant really didn't have to wait that long for a bite about the same for all lines i don't see the visibility thing being that big of a factor either way the abrasion thing i think that has to do with how easy the line snaps and if that's the case 13.46 so again that's they've all been within 11 to 16 pounds all of them have fallen there i haven't noticed a big change either way we'll catch another one here just so we can have a fair comparison but i think the abrasion thing just maybe the fluorocarbon is the strongest out of all of them because if we look the abrasion resistance is high on fluorocarbon. It means it's going to resist, the way I'm reading it, it's going to resist breaking the most. The monofilament is moderate. Okay. So the braided resistance is low here. So that would mean it would break easier. Now, I always thought in real life it was the opposite. I always thought that braided meant stronger. But the way that's worded there, abrasion resistance low, it makes me think that it's going to snap before the other two lines do. But I don't know. If anybody out there knows and has tested it as far as snapping, it would take a long time to test. But if anybody out there has done that or has noticed anything about the abrasion please comment and, and let me know but as far as like your normal fishing out here guys i don't see a difference really 
The, the biggest difference is how much line the braided can put on there. You definitely want to use braided when you're fishing for legendary. Definitely, 100%. Or those big carp. You know, bigger fish. I'm going to say lake trout, Atlantic salmon, uh, the two carp species, mirror and common, and the legendaries, the bigger legendaries, you want to use braided. Really don't matter for anything else. That That's going to be, and there's a 12.26 right in the wheelhouse of all the others. Uh, di no noticeable differences as far as catching fish goes. But you, you will get a little more line to help you not get spooled if you use braided. Honestly, probably fluorocarbon would be my best bet if we're not fishing for huge fish. Fluorocarbon, because of the visibility being low and the abrasion thing, supposedly it's stronger. Fluorocarbon for the win, for your 95% of your fishing needs. That's my evaluation on that. Um, I don't know, who knows? But if you would guys, do me a favor, hit that like, subscribe, notify bell. Really helps the channel out. We have been growing, and you guys are rock stars watching those videos, commenting on them. I see the same people commenting on them about every time. That does not go unnoticed, guys. Thank you so much. I try to comment on all my comments, you know, and reply to all my comments. Remember, December 21st, that's coming up in four days. We are doing a subathon. It's my first attempt at a subathon ever. We're going to put two hours on the clock, start with like a normal stream, and then I'm going to go as long as you guys make me go. New subs, which are free on YouTube. Add three minutes onto my clock. New members or gifted memberships will add 10 minutes onto my clock. Um, we're going to have a countdown timer up in the top corner. Super chats, for example, you know, a $5 super chat is going to be, you know, dollar a minute on the super chats. So, but I am cutting it off at 24 hours. Um, I'm hoping I would be happy with 12 hours. I've done one 24 hour stream and almost died three times. Uh, it is really hard <laughs> to do a 24 hour stream, but I am on Christmas break. I'm doing it on December 21st. That way, I don't have anything planned that day. I've got the whole day if needed. Uh, we may end up playing some Hunter Call of the Wild. We may play uh, maybe even Way of the Hunter. And we will catch you in the next video. Merry Christmas if I don't see you before then.